will be the shortest presentation you will likely see. Um, so we're going to begin with, uh, this was a request after we had, I think there was, a, there was a transport that involved a fetal maternal hemorrhage, but one in particular that prompted, prompted this specific uh, request for a talk. So I think this is only 10 or 12 slides, so it doesn't go on for uh, very long. But um, So what is a fetal maternal hemorrhage? Uh, why does it happen? And what effect can they have on the newborn? And how do you treat it? And this, some of these things might seem obvious, but there's just there's a little bit of a nuance to sort of when you get to how do you treat it. Um, depending sorry, on Michael, can I just add, it's not in your binder, you guys? Okay. Oh, okay. No. So when we're thinking about, good morning. Uh, when we're thinking about fetal the fetal maternal space, so the fetus and this may I'm just going to run run through the anatomy again, not the anatomy but the setup again. So you've got a fetus with an umbilical cord. The umbilical cord goes to the placental surface, which is the fetal surface of the placenta. On the other side, there's the maternal uh, part of the um, uh, circuit. And so what happens is you've got. On the fetal surface, you've got arteries and veins, right? And then they go into these little spaces, and these are called cotyledons. Oh, it's labeled right there. Um, the cotyledons are where you get the veins and the arteries becoming very, very tiny and being exposed to the maternal blood supply. So the maternal arteries and veins are going into this space. Okay, and this is the intervillous space. And so if you can imagine what's happening here is, uh, Carbon dioxide, for example, is coming out, CO, or, and O2 is going in. Um, and so that's where you get your gas exchange, and that's you know the basis of how oxygen gets to the fetus and carbon dioxide leaves the fetus. And you can see that normally you have a nice uh, fetal capillary right adjacent to the syncytiotropoblast in the intervillous space, and gas will flow free, freely back and forth. So that, that's what should happen. Um, now what happens is, you know, going back here, I'm just going to show it. Whoops, going back here. These are, like, we're talking microns in size. Like that, you know, the, the cells in size is how wide these spaces are. So it's not hard to imagine that a break can occur. And you can get blood that goes from the fetus into the mum, okay, as one of these little capillaries uh, in here breaks, okay. So that, that's not hard to understand. So. Blood from the fetal side of the placenta crosses into the maternal circulation. And by the way, this happens all the time. You know, I, I, don't, I doubt there's a pregnancy where there's some fetal blood that doesn't get into the maternal circulation. Um, one thing that's important to recognize, though, is the fetus only has about 80 to 90 mils of blood per kilo. So if, if you have a one kilo kid you're going up to get, and there's been a concern about a fetal maternal hemorrhage, and basically you can get like a sinusoidal pattern um, on your CTG for the mum, which is usually reflective of, that may be reflective of a fetal maternal hemorrhage. Um, so if, 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 the, if you're told that the fetus hasn't been moving, the tracing is consistent, you've got to think, well, how much blood could that baby lose before that baby gets really, really anemic? And so if you only have 80 to 90 mils and you lose 30 mils uh, into the mum, that's a significant hemorrhage. But this, this is where uh, there's a bit of a nuance to it. You can have chronic bleeding, you can have acute bleeding. And so acute is, are the ones usually that cause us the most distress because the chronic, the babies who have had chronic small amounts of blood going into the mum, where they are replenishing through their bone marrow, they are replenishing some of their red cells, but the red cells are being lost. Sorry, excuse me. Can I just show you who left our charger here? You will be forever immortalized in this video. <laughs> um, in any event, uh, where was I? Right, we were talking about chronic. So the chronic kids, um, they they likely are not going to be born so sick, okay? Because they've gotten used to very slowly having a lower hemoglobin. But the ones where there's been no opportunity to compensate, so it's like that. There's a sudden fetal maternal hemorrhage. Those are the ones that typically you'll see are very pale and ghastly looking, um, you know, and uh, have a lot of uh, work breathing, 
uh, aren't breathing, well, either a lot of work are breathing from heart failure quickly or they're not breathing at all, they quit after. Um, why does it happen? Um, so these are some of the things that I would look for, you know, in the history if you're suspecting it, because of course, um, the Kleihauer Bethke test is the test that, I'm gonna show you what that is, but that's the test to um, diagnose and confirm a fetal maternal hemorrhage. Um, but um, if you hear that, you know, mom's been in a motor vehicle accident or she's a victim of spousal abuse and she was hit in the abdomen or fell on her abdomen, that would be a concern. Um, external cephalic version, this is a well-known um, consequence. It's a risk. The, you know, if you're taking the fetus and you're trying to move it from breech, you know, around to vertex, uh, you can disrupt the placenta and cause that injury. Um, manual removal of the placenta, that one I don't quite understand. Uh, it's listed. Uh, Probably from a previous pregnancy, maybe? Maybe. But yeah, that one when I saw it, because it's listed in textbooks, and mm -hmm. it's, you know, but that would seem to me to be after the baby's born, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't quite understand how that, uh, how that happens. Unless, actually, now that I think about it, I guess well, it, it, would be, it would be post-birth. Yeah, it would be post-birth. Yeah. I can see, because you're still attached, so if, the cord, if you're doing delayed cord clamping, and you manually remove the placenta, perhaps, but I, I don't see really how that works. Amniocentesis, preeclampsia. Preeclampsia probably because that vasospasm leads to uh, ischemia and you can get bleeding across there. Uh, this is, should be placebo, placental anomalies, not placebo. Uh, so tumors, other vascular abnormalities, and in twin, monodi twin pregnancies. Um, so effects on the newborn. So this is sort of what we talked about already. So the ones who, that have acute bleeding, it's no different than you know a pediatric patient who suddenly hemorrhages. You know they're going to go into shock very quickly uh, with poor perfusion, apnea, uh, need for intubation, and inotropes. The chronic kids, um, you may actually find that they're hydropic. So that's one of the things that we look for uh, in hydrops fatalis. You know you always check the hemoglobin. Is the hemoglobin low because you can over time develop. Um, develop uh, hydrops fatalis from heart failure. So just global uh, edema. So antenatally, th this is sort of what I suggested to you, you know, be vigilant for it. Look, you know, look, you know, if the, sometimes the obstetricians will say that there's cerebralization. And what they mean by that is they can measure the middle cerebral artery velocity um, and they can look and see whether it's increased. If it's increased, what's happening is the body is trying to preserve blood flow to the brain, and that's a sign of anemia, okay? Um, they may also see that the baby's very tachycardic, so they'll look at it and they'll say based on the tracing, based on the flows, that they think the baby's anemic. And then what they can do is a cortocentesis, they can actually take some blood out of the cord, and if they see the baby's anemic, they can do an in utero transfusion. Um, for RH negative mothers, um, we, you know, we recommend you give Winro at 28 and at 28 weeks and at 30 weeks. And in case you were wondering, that neutralizes 30 mils of whole blood, okay? And basically a fetal maternal hemorrhage is considered, a, that's a significant one, is about 30 mils, especially if you're only a kilo or two, 30 mils out of your blood volume is, is a fairly large amount. So treatment um, really differs depending on whether it's acute or chronic. Um, and there's not a lot, you're not gonna find a lot of evidence-based medicine about this. This is more opinion. So I'm just gonna tell you, the, the opinion would be, if it's acute, I'd be pushing boluses in. Now boluses are gonna help at least increase your circulating volume of saline, but that's not gonna increase your oxygen carrying capacity. So O negative blood, as soon as you can get access to it would be good. In the meantime though, giving uh, crystalloid would be um, a reasonable option. Uh, you know, clearly, you know, the best, this is where the blood gas could come in handy if you can get the hemoglobin on the blood gas, because waiting an hour for the lab to tell you what the hemoglobin is is not always the easiest thing to do. With chronic, the idea there is you may want to give smaller volumes with Lasix, because these kids um, are in heart failure, and so much like if you have a, any, a child in heart failure or an adult in heart failure, and you give them a bunch of boluses or a large bolus, they can get flash pulmonary edema. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are kids where, you know, I'd want to divide and go 10 mils per kilo, give some Lasix. Another 10 mils per kilo, give some Lasix. Get a blood gas at that point. Check the hemoglobin. If the hemoglobin is, let's say, still 80, <coughs> um, you know, then I would give another 10 per kilo. So you would just keep topping up. So how are we to know if it's, like, acute or chronic? Like, will it just... 
And usually it's it's the way they present. Like the child who's born very, the child who's born sort of looks fine. Like the, the chronic kids look really fine, Maybe except they're pale. really pale. They're like okay. white. And those kids, you get a hemoglobin back that says 35. Yeah. And you go, oh my God, you know, this child. Now, the kids that have had been ticking along with a hemoglobin of 140 and just bled 70 mils into their mom, um, those kids come out looking like shock. Mm -hmm. You know, shut down, apneic, or severe respiratory distress. And those are the ones that I would, based on the clinical picture, presume are more acute. Um, and, and also you go back to the history. You know, if you go back to the history and you hear that mom's been followed with multiple ultrasounds, everything's been fine, there's never been a concern in pregnancy, um, and then suddenly the child looks like crap, that child likely has an acute bleed. The mother who's had chronic bleeding has likely been, you know, often they'll be identified. So there'll be something wrong on an ultrasound. Or there'll be something wrong, mom comes in with decreased fetal movement, gets an ultrasound, they see cerebralization. So these kids, you kind of are aware there's probably a problem. Um, the other thing is with the chronic ones, they may actually look edematous um, because they, they may have been in chronic heart failure. But, but that's a good point. Uh, so just to address the O negative blood situation, uh, was it Ainsley who went up and uh, they won't give her, they have, their referring said they had problems giving her blood because they said it was neonatal protocol blood. I believe that was yeah, but you the issue. Still give but it, it's yeah. O negative blood is all we need, right? O negative is all you need. And the great thing about the neonate is they're very forgiving. Um, you know, you can, you know, if, yeah. if, if, if so, if somebody says that to you, we can't release it because we don't have a neonatal protocol. You can say, do you know that you can transplant hearts, which are AVO incompatible from, in, from one baby to another, because they just don't respond. <laughs> you know, for the first six months, yeah. the AVO system is very weak. Um, and so you can get away with that. So, you know, uh, you know, ultimately, if the baby needs blood, they need blood. Yeah. And y if you don't give them the blood, they're gonna die. <laughs> you know, so it's- The it's team a, did insist on it, and they did give them the blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that may be but the response you- that may be the response you, you may get from a referring site is that yeah. we know you give neonatal protocol blood, we don't carry that, yes, but O negative blood will do you just fine. Yeah. All right, so if a newborn has anemia, order the Klahar Betke test. Um, now, I thought I had a picture of this. You do. Oh, <laughs> take a sample of maternal blood, thank you, and place in the, so basically, um, maternal cells when placed in an acidified bath, they just, uh, they, they basically vanish, they become ghosts. And all you see is the membrane and all the red stuff, all, this, all the red staining, pink staining goes away. And you wind up with this. You wind up with fetal cells which are resistant to the acid. So I, I think that's kind of a cool test. So that's when you order a Klyhauer Betke, this is what you see, all these ghost-like maternal cells and all these bright pinks are fetal cells. And so that's how they, that's how they tell. No, they can do that after birth. As long as they have a lab, or if they have a lab, that's a good question whether they can do it or not. Um, they'd have to get just a sample from you'd probably just have to take it if the lab doesn't have it, then you'd have to collect a sample and bring it down with you. Have them collect a sample, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the absence of obvious bleeding, you know, if there's an abruption, if there's a previa, vasa previa, probably not a fetal maternal hemorrhage, but when you've got you know, minimal when the obstetrician says no, there was minimal blood loss, like everything looked fine and the baby's severely anemic, it's almost always that. So even if you didn't make the diagnosis, you're still gonna treat it the same. It's just good to be able to say, here's what the diagnosis was to the family. And that's that presentation. Yeah. So if you suspect a strong suspicion and you have the opportunity to take blood with us from our blood bank, we should take our opportunity? Yeah, I would say if, if but, I, mean, I don't know how often you would suspect it. Exactly, that would be the problem, right? You, wouldn't, know until you won't know until you get there. And they do well, yes or no. I mean, you might. So let's say you get a call that there's a baby 37 weeks because they're not going to be usually preterm. They're usually actually the term kids. Mm -hmm. So it could be you get called for a term kid, severe distress, and they'll, they'll tell you the hemoglobin is 35. Yeah, if they've done a hemoglobin. Yeah, if you have the ability for the baby. Because usually the baby is very pale, so somebody yeah. will draw a hemoglobin. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay, now our next talk. Uh, I know we've changed the names. Get out of here. And we'll go to GI. Okay. It's congenital. Is this one? Surgical abdominal issues, yeah.
Sorry, any questions about that last presentation? It's pretty straight, straightforward, I think. All right. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, does everybody... Are we good, or does anyone need a break for a bathroom or anything? I know that was a short talk, but I realize people have different thresholds. <laughs> if you need to get up, you I might go. Have to <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> you need to drink that huge volume there. Okay, so we're going to cover a few things, and I'm go again, you know, as sort of the philosophy, you know, with the what's that? Oh, can you not see that screen? Nap time. Nine o'clock. Does that show up, dude? No, it shows up nicely, yes. The black screen doesn't show up often. Do you want me just to change the background? Why don't I just change the background? Sure, you can do that. That's probably the easiest thing to do. Now you can go to the washroom. <laughs> I want that change. Because you're on read only, maybe? Uh, oh, yeah, that's it. Dave, you're very smart. What did it say? What did we Oh, edit presentation. Mm -hmm. I just know I've done that mistake before, so that's why. There you go. Is that better? That's better. Yeah, that's better. Now we don't have to all go to bed. Right. There's nothing more a presenter likes than having people fall asleep. <laughs> Should I? Why don't we just start start this one over? I think I planted the seed as soon as I said. <laughs> yeah, so washer. That's it. all it took. Which house were you in? My kids are as well. You know my kids? Mm -hmm. I didn't know my kids. My little sister is really good friends with Amir. Oh, who's your little sister? Justine. Yeah. Oh. 